Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of So Tell Us Time. Today we're going to be talking about comfort is the enemy of growth. Now what does that mean? Troy, comfort is the enemy of growth. That sounds weird. When I'm comfortable, I'm happy. Everything <laughs> feels good. I'm excited to be comfortable. I don't want to be uncomfortable. That's terrible. That's like buying a chair and being like, man, this chair is so uncomfortable, but I love it. Isn't that right? Right, but if you have an uncomfortable chair, what are you going to do? You're going to grow a bunch of calluses, right? So there's <laughs> <Yeah>. growth. <laughs> or you're going to get your butt up out that chair and you're going to go do something. That's and that's what we thing. need to do. As business owners and entrepreneurs, we need to get our butts up out of chairs and we need to go do something, right? So comfort is the enemy of growth. Now here's a question. Are you happy today with where your business is? And if you said yes to that, then the follow-up question is, are you really happy or are you just comfortable with where your business is today? Because like Tony Robbins said, if you want a muscle to grow, if you want big muscles, right, then you have to lift something out of your comfort zone. You have to push beyond the comfortable. If you don't, there's not going to be any growth in that muscle or he was really just using it as a metaphor in life. You have to get uncomfortable. And if you really think about it, the when we grow the most in life is when we're uncomfortable. So not even just in business. Let's talk yep. about our personal lives real quick. I'll get a little bit personal with you. When we grow the most personally is when we're uncomfortable. Think about where you've had some major growth, where you've grown as a person. You know, you've gotten stronger. It's usually through the trials and tribulations that make you stronger. It's not from being like, oh, I'm so comfortable and I don't worry about money and I don't have to worry about anything in life and I'm healthy. Healthy and I'm strong and everybody's nice to me and this is just great. I'm just, life is so wonderful. I'm growing exponentially. <laughs> Look at me. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. I mean, even just going back to, you know, when I was in school, I remember, now I'll, I'll share with you guys. I spoke, um, I gave a talk the other day to about um, 400, 500 people and it was about courage, having courage and how we can move forward in life with courage. And I told the stories about when I was younger in my childhood and how I had ADHD. Yep. And this was before, like ADHD was not a thing that was commonly, it wasn't cool. Let me put it that way. It wasn't cool. Doctors today are like, you've got ADHD and you've got ADHD and you've ADHD for everybody. And then they hand out pills like it's crazy, right? Yes. Like, it's, I mean, it's kind of sad actually. But back then they really didn't know too much about ADHD and it wasn't widely accepted. Right. So I remember my mom hearing something about it, taking me to the doctor because I couldn't sit still. You can imagine I not only have ADHD, but I had restless leg syndrome. So if you don't know what that is, it's where your your legs, if they're not moving, they just ache like it was very painful. And so as a kid in elementary school, you can imagine school was like it was hell. That's really what it was. That's the only way I can describe it is it was totally terrible. I hated every minute of it and I was so uncomfortable. So if I wasn't like stretching and moving my legs, I was, they were hurting. And then on top of that, I had ADHD, not just ADD, but ADHD with the hyper side of it. And so obviously like I still have it today and, and we'll talk about that, but she goes to the doctor and she's like, Hey, I've heard about this thing called ADHD and I think my son might have it. And the doctor looked at her and said, ma'am, there's no such thing as ADHD. It's called bad parenting. <laughs> Man, it's called bad parenting. Well, luckily that doctor is no longer on this earth. Yeah. <laughs> and, and not because of mom. She didn't kill him. <laughs> Every right to strangle that guy. But he was an old fashioned kind of guy. And I kind of wish he still was around to say, so there's no such thing as ADHD. Right. <laughs> really? Where'd you get your doctorate? Hmm? Out of the Cracker Jack box. <laughs> Out of the Cracker Jack box. So it, needless to say, it was funny. Like the, the principal called my mom in one time and said, you know, if you would just spank your son more, he'd be a better boy. <laughs> you know, and like, <laughs> This was the solution. This was great parenting advice that the school, the education system was giving my parents. I had teachers that they just didn't know what to do with me. So one of my teachers had what she called the thinking box. <laughs> and the thinking box was a closet that she stuck a, a, a desk in. And every day she would stick me in this closet and she'd shut the door. And I would do my work in this closet because I was too distracted by all the kids around me. I mean, really, if you think about this, this is like child abuse. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure the thinking box was actually invented by North Korea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, they used it all the P -O -W's? time. Yeah, when the, when, you know, the U.S. soldiers needed to 
time out. A time out. Yeah. I'm pretty about. sure my teacher got <laughs> recruited by, you know, North Korea. So, yeah. you know, she's over there now. <laughs> so if you can think, I mean, it, I joke and I laugh about it now because, you know, I'm 36 years old and it doesn't matter anymore. But I mean, it was a very hard thing for me as a kid. I struggled in school. I uh, you know, uh, was held back. I I was not an educated guy, and I still wouldn't call myself as an educated guy when it comes to just you know school work. Um, but th- in those moments, that's when I started to learn to grow. As I had to work through these things, because obviously I couldn't. Uh, turn out the way that I was today if I didn't move through these and move past them and stretch myself. If I were to let this just overcome me, then I wouldn't be who I am today and I wouldn't be doing what I am today. In fact, you, I had a great- You'd still teacher. be in a closet somewhere. <laughs> <Still> <laughs> in a closet. Probably in North Korea. She yeah. would have taken me with him. Look, we got a, t- a guinea pig right here. He's been doing it for years. And look at him. He's gone crazy. So, <laughs> I know. Um but that's the thing is, I, in fact, I did have one teacher finally that was amazing. So don't, I mean, don't feel totally bad for me. Yes, my, I, I could tell you stories that would just make people cry. And I, I do, I get up on stage and I, I do motivational speaking as well. And I share these stories. I did have a teacher who was awesome though. One teacher, she was amazing. I would fail every test I ever took in school. I was just terrible at school. So I'd fail every test. Well, one day she said to me, uh, Trevor, I'd like you to stay in for recess. And I was like, yeah, par of the course. Like I do every day. I'm Here we go again. Trouble. And you just like started I'm walking towards in, the closet. Yeah. <laughs> and luckily it was a different teacher. This was not the teacher that did the closet. That teacher was never a good teacher. She was horrible. Um, and like, yeah, I think her name's like Kim Jong Un or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so, so this other teacher, I was like, okay, yes, I'll, I'll go put my head down on the desk and you know be in trouble. And she's like, no, 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 come here, I just want to try something with you. And she actually said to me, she goes, okay, the test that we just took that you failed, I want to give it to you, but I want to, I want to ask you the questions, and then I want you to just answer me, not write it down or anything like that. Just I'm gonna ask you the questions, and then I'm gonna have you answer me. So she did. And I answered it and I got it right. So she asked me another one and I got it right. And she asked me another one. I got it right. She goes, okay, now I'm going to ask you a question and I just want you to write it down. And so she did. And I did. And all of a sudden I went from an F in that class to a hundred percent in that class. And I was getting an A and we realized I was audible. I couldn't read it and understand it, comprehend it, but I could hear it and totally knew. I knew I was learning all this stuff, but see, that was the first teacher ever in my life to try or put in any effort besides sticking me in a closet or or spanking me or whatever you know like or trying to just put me on medication yeah I mean it was it was really a hard time in my life I mean I remember the teachers used to tease me they would be like Trevor did you take your medication today and you know what kids do when they hear teachers and, and parents and adults talk like that then it was like constant teasing did you take your medication did you take your medication you know and I was as a little kid it was pretty hard it was pretty devastating so but through that and through you know having um, help having people surround me and having people help me. I was able to push through it. I was able to push my boundaries and personally in my life, I was able to grow. And so that's the thing is that's one thing I talk about. I talk about our trials and our tribulations, um, when I'm giving these speeches and I talk about how we can use them to fuel our success and our growth. And I'll tell you what, I've been quoted in many ADHD books and my thing is, is people always say, well, you'll grow out of ADHD. They say, someday, <laughs> someday you're going to grow out of that, buddy. And I'm like, well, I'm 36 yeah. and I still haven't grown out of it. You, but, when, when you die, yeah, you will grow out of it. When you die, well, I might take it to heaven with me. We don't know. <laughs> but here's the thing is ADHD is it's it's you don't grow out of it. You grow into it. In fact, it turns into your superpower. It's how I have the energy and the motivation to do everything that I do every single day, get up in the morning and go, go, go. So I I actually talk and I have been quoted in these books on ADHD with these experts. And in fact, I've been asked to come and speak at a school soon that they're having some problems with bullying and they also have a problem with uh, teasing and ADHD and everything like that. And we're going to talk about how, you know, you don't grow out of ADHD. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you grow into ADHD and it becomes your superpower, right? And it really is. I'm like a superhuman now. So it's exciting and it's awesome. (laughs) All right. So we've talked about what Tony said. He had a great, you know, you got to exercise it. I told a personal story. That's exciting. I hope you enjoyed it. (laughs) Just stick with us, guys. Okay. So now we're going to talk about being 
comfortable or too comfortable in your business. Right. Exactly. So, you know, a lot of times, again, we've been talking about like you're, you're comfortable. Things are going good. You know, revenues are good. Everything's good. And you're just kind of on cruise control. And you're like, this is this is why I work so hard in my business, you know, to get to this point where I can just cruise along. Yeah. But that's not always a good thing. You know, being too comfortable in your business can actually lead to a flat line in your growth mm -hmm. or worse, a decline in your growth. Absolutely. And um, I'm going to share a story about that. But first, Albert Einstein said, a ship is always safe at the shore, but that is not what it was built for. Right. <laughs> That's awesome. And I want you to think about that. You know, you're absolutely right. You know, the conservative in me, like, you know, the one who doesn't like want to take risks and things like that is like, no, 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 just keep the ship right here. <laughs> Don't ever put it out on the water and then we'll always have the ship. But, you know, that's not what it was built for. Your business wasn't built for you to just kind of be comfortable yeah. and, you know, barely make it or whatever. Yeah. You, it was built, you built it, right, to give you the life that you wanted to have. Yeah. So don't stop when you get comfortable, keep yeah. growing. Yep. And so I'm going to tell you guys a little bit, a little story about us. So we were... Um, a couple of years, well, several years ago, actually, yep. we uh, had our business, we were cranking, and we had a partner, a contract that we landed that was a really, really good contract. And basically what the contract was is this partner generated sales um, into us, and then we did all of the fulfillment for it. Yep. So they had a sales team, call center, all that kind of stuff, and they were just cranking business in the door to us, yep. and then we fulfilled on it for them. So they didn't have to worry about the fulfillment. We didn't have to worry about marketing and sales. Yep. And um, so literally new jobs were coming in daily from this client and we had great employees. We had these automated systems in place and the company just ran on its own basically. You know, the order came in, the employees did the work and the automated systems cranked and we got paid and it was smooth sailing. I mean, like it was so easy. And in fact, it was so easy. Trevor, what were you doing every day? <laughs> I think I've told this story before a little bit. I was <laughs> golfing five days a week. It was amazing. I I didn't have a care in the world during this part of yeah. life. I mean, I in fact, there were times where I didn't visit the office for three months. I had never stepped foot in the office for three months um, because I was out golfing and having a good time and doing all this stuff. And we were just living it up. I was so comfortable. Yeah, it was like super comfortable. I actually went and started building a whole nother business. Yeah. You know, and I was like, well, you know, this one's just on autopilot. I yep. don't need to do anything here. So what am I going to do with my time? I'm, I wasn't huge into golfing like Trevor and my dad were. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I just, that wasn't my thing. So I was like, I'll just go start another business yeah. and, you know, keep building revenue. And so that's what I was doing. I was off building another business. Oh, my yeah. dad and Trevor were golfing every day and life was amazing. Oh, and it was, it was crazy because between, so for perspective, I mean, Troy built a consulting business that grew huge, exponential. It was awesome. He had very big clients and, and it was really good. We were, we had two contracts with this company and between the two contracts, we were doing a million dollars a year just between those two contracts with just that customer. So yeah. think about that. We had a bunch of other customers too. So we were doing really, really well. So it was very easy for us to step back and go, yeah, this is good, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. And then of course, what happened? <laughs> well, it crashed, right? <laughs> what ended up happening was the contracts went away yep. because there were, you know, business decisions that changed yep. and new management that came in yep. and decided to shut down that line of business. Don't work with publicly traded companies. Yeah, they exactly. <laughs> and they focused on another, they decided to focus on something completely different. Yep. And so we went from all this money coming in the door every single month to zero leads, zero, yeah. you know, jobs yeah. coming in the door. And all of a sudden, you know, our employees are calling us up going, uh, what do you want me to work on today? <laughs> yeah. And we're like, uh, that's a really good question. So yeah. let's see what we can do. So then all of a sudden we literally had to kind of rebuild the yeah. business. Yeah, we did. You know? We had to start over. And guess what? We were very uncomfortable at that point. Yes, <laughs> it was very uncomfortable. <laughs> like even my wife was like, uh, what changed? What happened? <laughs> like, she's like, where'd all the money go? And where, why are you all, you know, well, I was gone all the time, but she's like, why are you going golfing? You are, where are you going? And I'm like, man, I got to get back to work. You know, it yeah. was, it was a big change. So again, you know, it was, we were comfortable and that's the thing. So when you're comfortable in your business, when everything's just yeah. rolling along, 
look at ways to grow. It's don't time to double down. Yeah, double down. Don't get lazy, if you will. Yeah, like we were, and you know, and because eventually everything changes in your business. Everything, right? It doesn't go forever. So everything's going to change. So you've got to be ready for that next change. So that's the first advice is just don't be comfortable in the business and make sure you're moving forward versus just resting on your laurels. Yes, now, absolutely. so let's talk about that. Let's talk about getting out of our comfort zone. Trevor, mm -hmm. how do we do that? Well, getting out of your comfort zone, it's it's interesting. Wayne Gretzky actually said, you will miss 100% of the shots you don't take. <laughs> What's that? What? That's genius. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> really? Oh, I thought I could make a shot without ever even swinging that, that <laughs> hockey stick, right? Right. <laughs> Hitting the puck. Yeah, you, you, if you don't get out of your comfort zone, you don't know what you're missing out on. And again, that's when we grow. That's when personally we grow, our businesses grow. Getting out of our comfort zone is the way to do it. And honestly, I found out uh, this many times in my life. I mean, gosh, I have just, you know, lived a crazy life. But uh, always when I'm pushing myself, I am personally getting better and my company always reflects that as well. And so one of the things that most people don't know about me, especially, you know, anybody that's just met me in the last few years or anything, I used to be terrified of public speaking. Now I do motivational speaking. Now I, I have literally been in front of tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands of people at this point in my life. But just five years ago, how scared of publicly speaking was I, Troy? <laughs> I'll tell you real quick. Trevor was so scared, not even public, like not even in public. Yeah. Like when we were, you know, we've shared the story, I think yeah. about the post place we created this awesome this marketing video and we we needed someone to be this like the face of this marketing oh. video and so it, it was my dad there's me there's trevor and i'm going trevor you should be it you've got the energy you got this you got that and so we sit him down in front of the uh camera to just record him <laughs> like giving this you know the sales presentation right yeah. and i you know for those of you that are just listening oh. i want you to just oh. imagine like a deer in the headlights uh. You know, he literally is just looking at the camera and he's like, uh, the post place is a really cool system. And I'm pretty sure I slowly did this. <laughs> yeah. and, he, and then I think he passed out <laughs> yeah. and fell over. The chair. And, and they were like, just be normal, just be natural. And I was like, OK, I'm just going to be natural. And they're like, what are you doing with your hands? I'm like, I don't know. They're just floating. And they're like, put your hands down. I'm like, OK. And then they're like. What are you doing with your hands again? I'm like, I don't know. They're just floating. Yeah, it was so funny. So Trevor, we're like, okay, what well, is that, that didn't from work. Anchorman? Yeah, exactly. And then like, and then we're like, okay, Ron, you do it. And then Ron's, oh. I don't know what the deal was, but oh. his was horrible too. And they're yeah. like, all right, Troy, I guess we'll have you do it. And then I did it, and they're like, well, you're the best of the three right now. And I'm like, how can this be? I'm the introvert. I'm the person who doesn't like to be in front of the camera. And so we knew, I knew at that point, oh. we had to figure out how to get Trevor oh past this because I knew what an amazing speaker he would be. Let's put it this way. So I had not spoken public. The last time I had spoken public <laughs> up until that point was when I was eight years old. My parents forced me. They asked me to give a talk at church and my parents forced me to give a talk at church. And I was like, I think that's the last day I showed up to church. <laughs> I think I, I got up there and I read the little the little talk that my mom wrote for me. And I think I just walked off the pulpit and I walked out of the church and I never looked back. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. But seriously, it was I was eight years old before I had ever like the last time that I ever had ever publicly spoke before. And yeah. so here here it is. Our company is making a shift and we're getting all these opportunities to go and speak. And. I'm freaking out because I know that I'm going to have to do this because I'm know, I know that eventually we're going to have to divide and conquer because we're getting too many speaking gigs and people are wanting us to come like crazy. So I'm freaking out. And actually, Troy and I and Ron are on this cruise and we're speaking to this group. And I mean, there was some pretty big names there. Um, who's the guy from Shark Tank that was there even? Oh, uh, Kevin Harrington. Kevin Harrington was even in the crowd like. I was, and, and the thing is, is I'm sitting, it's funny. So somebody has got to give a talk. Somebody has got to speak at this thing at this event. And they're like, well, do you want to do it? And immediately I'm like, Oh, my stomach. Oh, I don't, I think I'm going to be sick. I don't know. I don't think I can do this. <laughs> and, and I'm like, okay, you got to do this, man. You got to do this. Like I've listened to motivational stuff my whole life. And I'm like, you can do it. And so I'm standing in front of the mirror and I've got my arms. I've got the pose. I wish you could really see this. You know, like I've got my arms on my, you go know, to hips. 
YouTube. This. Watch it. Go to YouTube and watch this because I've got my arms on my hips and I've got my big chest, well, my little chest popped out. And I'm like doing the Superman pose. And I'm like, they're all here to listen to you speak. You're the greatest. You're better than Tony. You're better than Zig Ziglar. You can do this. You know? And then I'm just like, yeah, I can, I can do this. I can do this. Hey, man, wake up. You can do this. You're the best. Yeah, I can, I can. And I'm trying to like. And your wife's in the background. Shut up. I'm trying to go to sleep. <laughs> I know. And I'm like freaking out. And so I just decided, I said, listen, I've got to do it. I've got to speak because I, this is going to happen. I'm just going to push myself. I'm just going to, I'm going to get up there and I'm going to try to make them laugh. And I might tell a story. Maybe I'll try to make them cry. Maybe I can make them cry because I'm definitely going to be crying. <laughs> and so I, I sit there and I practice in front of a mirror and I just practice, practice, practice. And I get up in front of this group and I give my presentation and I even told them, I said, now I hope you'll bear with me because this is my first time ever speaking. Now, mind you, we're on a cruise where it's unlimited food. And for three days of this cruise, I didn't eat anything. I was so afraid I was going to either throw up or run to the bathroom in the middle of talking to these people because I was terrified. And so I get up there and I even tell a joke or something. I say something to how I'm a terrible speaker. I've never spoken before. It's my it's my first time. In fact, I was like, oh, I'll play on their sympathy. Yes, I'll play on their pity. And so I get up and I talk about how it's my first time and I'm terrified and this and that. And so anyways, I give this talk and people are laughing and people are kind of actually even getting a little bit emotional. And at the end of this talk, people come running up to me and they're like, no way, no way. You're amazing. You, you played us. You, this was, you totally tricked us. We thought this was your, really your first time speaking. <laughs> you are an awesome speaker and you totally tricked us. And I was like, no, really, it is my first time speaking. And from that, it was like, people are like, I want you on my TV show. I want you on my podcast. I want you on my radio show. I want you at my event. And, and it just from there, just boom, blew up. And so here's the thing is, who knew? I never knew. I was terrified. Now, Ron and Troy, they had a little inkling. They knew what I was like. And they kept telling me, like, you're going to be in my wife. And these people kept telling me, like, you are a speaker, man. You tell stories. You're a storyteller. And that's the, the best kind of speakers are storytellers. And that's, I mean, I, I could go on a whole tangent of, like, that's what your marketing should be. It's telling right. a story. And we'll go into that. Uh, we'll go in. We'll have a whole podcast about telling stories. But I, I just succeeded and I was so excited. So from there, do you think that like the next time it was just like, oh yeah, I've got this man. Like <laughs> I'm the best. I'm the best speaker on the planet. No, I was terrified for three days. I wouldn't eat anything because I was going to throw up or run to the bathroom. Like I was dying and it took me now it's been five years. Now I can get up and I, I grew it. It started in front of like a group of about 75 to a hundred. And then it was like a group of 150 to 200. And then it was like, 450, 800, 1,000, 5,500, and it just kept growing from there, and I kept getting in front of bigger and bigger groups, and now I've literally traveled the world speaking in front of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, honestly, at this point, probably five years later, I can't even, I don't even, I did 40 events one year myself, Yeah. and Troy and Ron still did events, so I'm sure I'm over 100,000 people that I've spoken in front of, and I make videos, and I you know, do all this stuff now, and who would have thought that I would be doing motivational speaking either? Because, right. I mean, it's amazing. But that was a direction that my company was going that if we wouldn't, if I wouldn't have stepped up and done it, we would not have grown that way because we wouldn't have pushed to do so many events, right? Right, yeah. Because at that point, I was the pretty much the only one yeah. going from event to event to yep. event speaking. Yep. And I knew I couldn't keep up what I was doing yeah. and we and we weren't going to hit the growth we needed. Yep. So we had to have Trevor step up yeah. to, you know, help with the growth. Yeah. And, and you it, know, worked. It, and, worked. Yeah, it worked. It worked. And I'm proud to say that I never threw up or had to wear a diaper <laughs> during a presentation. So that's really exciting. Exactly. It worked out really well. And you know what? The funny thing is, Ron, Ron was a, a phenomenal speaker. He spoke all over the world as well. He was on huge stages with, he, you know, the biggest names in the game, like we've said before. Yeah. But, you know, he was in a, at a place in his life where he's just like, I, I don't know. I don't know if I really want to go and do all this. So, I mean, really, it was on Troy. But then and then seeing me do what I did, Ron got all excited again. Yep. And he was like, man, I, I want to get back into this. And so then we started to divide and conquer. And it was insane how many events we were traveling and doing. Yeah. And the, the number of sales we did. Yeah. You know, so, so huge. And again, not that speaking is what's going to grow your business no. necessarily. But the point is yeah. that, you know, when you look at ways to, you know, grow your business, to mm -hmm. generate more revenue, you know, there might be something out there that kind of scares you to do. Yeah. 
and you're like, oh, well, yeah, I know that could probably make me money, but yeah. I don't want to go down that road. Well, basically right? for 31 years of my life, I was terrified. Yeah. I said I could never stand in front of a crowd and speak. Never. I, w I was horrified of it. So I had to literally push out of that comfort zone. And it's created such an amazing thing because, I mean, beyond like for work and stuff, that's really fun. But like the, the motivational stuff, the talking to the youth, to, to helping kids that have ADHD, helping kids with bullying and things like that, the experiences that I'm able to share and the lives I'm able to touch, yeah. that's a passion. Like someday when I'm done with all of this and, you know, we've made our millions upon millions of millions of dollars and sold our companies off or whatever, I'm just going to travel and do it for free. That has now become a passion. So something that I was a great, a huge weakness in my life, a huge weakness, I turned it into a strength. Yep. And now it has become one of my favorite things to do. Exactly. All right. So let's talk about some ideas that get, you know, what are some ideas to get you out of your comfort zone and start growing your business? So, you know, we've talked about speaking, we've talked about all these other things, but let's talk about, you know, what are some other ideas that can actually help, you know, that, that'll help you? Maybe, maybe speaking is one of those things that will it, just it really be. help your business, but there are other ways to do it too. So we've come up with a couple of ideas that I want you to think about from the business perspective and also from personal. And so I'm going to take care of the business side of it, Trevor, you take care of the personal. Sounds good. So first and foremost, you know, what are some things you can do? You can test new marketing strategies. I can't tell you how many times we get a business owner that comes to us and they're like, yeah, you know, I've, I've always wanted to do like PPC, but I ah, mean, I just don't know if it'll work for my business or, you know, and they, they're just afraid to take a step yeah. and give it a shot. So maybe that's something you can do. Maybe there's a marketing strategy that you feel like that could probably work for my business or maybe, you know, whoever you're working with for your marketing is saying, you know, this could be really good for you, you know, so give it a shot. Yeah. Try it out. Um, another thing you can do to get you out of your comfort zone, hire a business coach or consultant because, mm -hmm. you know, that's part of their job. Part of their job is to, you know, take a look at your business and show you where you need to improve Absolutely. and then push you to do that. They're not going to do it for you, right? Yeah. They're going to push you to get it done and help you get, maybe give you resources and things like that. So having a business coach or consultant is always a great way to motivate yourself. Yeah, because they look at it from a different perspective. Exactly. And they if you're if they're a business coach or something like that, then that this is what they're doing. They have a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge when it comes to doing things from a different perspective, which is just it's val so valuable. Yes. And again, most likely if they're doing their job correctly, they're holding you accountable. Right. Yeah. I know like for us, a lot of times when we're working with businesses, we say, OK, well, here's what you need to do. This, this, this and this. And they're like, yeah, I know. Yeah. I've been talking about doing that for like a year. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, OK, well, why haven't you done Let's it? Put well, in some deadlines. I'm just so busy. Da, 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 da. And we're like, OK, great. You're going to have this done yeah. by next week. I, and I love that. I love that. <laughs> I love when people say, oh, I'm just so busy. And I'm like, then why are you talking to me? You're talking to me because you want more business, right? You want more business. So, and it's so funny. They say, well, I'm too busy. No, you're not too busy. That's why you're talking to me. Yep, you exactly. So another idea is join a mastermind or like a networking group, you know, so maybe you are an introvert, mm -hmm. more like me, and mm -hmm. you, you know, don't really like getting out and meeting people and networking. Great. Join a networking group. Yeah. Force yourself out there. Yes. Start to meet people and look for relationships. Oh, I don't want to do that. Oh, that's terrible. No, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> if you just in your mind said, I don't want to do that. Oh, I don't want to do that. Okay, great. That means you need to go do that. Yeah. Unless it doesn't work for your business. Like, we're not going to tell you to go do something that doesn't work for your business, right? Yeah. If you're like, that doesn't work. But if you know it could work or you feel like it could work and you just don't, or you're scared to do it, get out and do it. Yeah. You know, another one is find a joint bench, uh, venture partner. Yeah. You know, maybe you, maybe that's something, you know, like, man, if I would just like take the time and work with this guy over here, I know we could refer a lot of business back and forth. Okay, great. You know, make the jump, work together with them, you know, figure out the partnership. Don't just keep waiting for, you know, things to happen and just sitting back. Another one that I thought of was implement a new software to automate your business. Well, I like that. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I mean, how many times we're like, oh, yeah, you know, I wish oh, I just wish that we I could have this done. If this is this would free up my day so much if I automated this part of my day. But it's like, oh, but then I got to get the software. I got to mm -hmm. learn it. I got to mm -hmm. implement it. Da, 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 da. I'm not good at that. OK, you Perfect. know, great. Learn it. Get it done. Yeah. Make your life easier. 
So that's another one from the business side. Anything else you would think of just off the top of your head for the business? Um, I, well, along with automating um, systems for your business, I would say, what about putting somebody in place too? Yeah. Automation is great. But if you can put somebody in place that helps make your life easier so that you can, you know, continue to grow the business and do other things, that's really good too. And like I've shared about my father-in-law, it's really hard for him to uh, hire people right. and to manage people. Well, we're here to grow and learn. Like the whole purpose of us even being on this earth, in my opinion, uh, and it's just my humble opinion, is for us to learn and grow and improve every single day. So like Troy was saying, like the whole join a networking group. and But if we wouldn't tell you to do that if it uh, didn't help your business. Well, on the flip side of that, if I'm sorry, but if you're an extreme introvert and you have a hard time interacting with people, then you know what? And you own a business, then even if it's not going to maybe necessarily grow your business, go join that networking group. Yeah. Because if you if you improve yourself, you will naturally start to improve your business and everything around you. Relationships get better. Everything gets better. Right. And that's that's a great because, like you said, it may not help your business. But if you improve your personal self, yeah. yep. it may help you on a personal level. Exactly. And improving yourself personally will affect your business. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk about that. What are some personal things? OK, so. These are super simple. It's nothing <laughs> mind blowing. It's nothing crazy that you've never heard before. But first thing you can do is how about start exercising? Shut up. Ex what? Yes. Exercising. Well, isn't that crazy? That is crazy. I've never heard anybody <laughs> say that before. Yeah. Maybe if we have healthy bodies and healthy hearts and good cardiovascular systems, we might be able to actually enjoy and reap the benefits of all of our hard work. Yeah. Which I found out firsthand, you know, a year ago when my back exploded and I was like, oh, my gosh, I was stuck in bed for eight months and this was terrible. I, I realized all I want to do from this day forward is like is, is well, all I wanted to do was walk. <laughs> Let's be real. All I wanted to do was yeah. walk. I just wanted to walk. <laughs> and so, I mean, but the thing was, is I, I wanted to get out and I wanted to, to improve myself and I wanted to improve my business. And I got reinvigorated about it. I was excited. I was excited about it. So exercise. Exercise is a great way to feel good about yourself, to feel um, healthy. And then when you're feeling healthy, you can work longer, you can work harder, your brain is working and firing at a higher level. Everything starts to come together. So super simple. Just start exercising. Yeah. One thing I love about exercising is that it's a very easy way to push yourself outside of your comfort zone totally on a daily basis absolutely because like trevor gave you that quote from tony robbins at the very beginning right yep. you could go to the gym every day you could lift the same 10 pound weight <laughs> yes. and you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and nothing will change right yep. but all you got to do is grab the you know grab the 15 pound weight lift it and all of a sudden you're like oh i'm out of my comfort zone totally. so it's such an easy way to push yourself to be uncomfortable yeah. and see a result come back because in a couple, you know, next week that 15 pounds is going to be easier. Totally. So it's a great way to, in a very small, short period of time, see the benefits of getting out of your comfort zone Absolutely. and growing. Well, and beyond that, we have a lot of uh, gym clients. Yep. So these gyms, it's interesting to see like their form fills come in and all this, the communication that they get with people. And you, it's amazing to see how uncomfortable people are just to enter into a gym. Yes. Like they are terrified to go in. Like I remember one form fill that came in and it was like the guy kept saying over and over and it's in, in a form. He just filled this form out and in a comment box was like, I'm extremely heavy. I'm very overweight and I'm very uncomfortable in my own skin and I'm very nervous about coming into a gym and I just don't know. And he was just so uncomfortable even to step foot in the gym. So if you are listening and you feel that way, well, guess what? There's a lot of great classes at gyms that you can go join. The first thing is go get a membership. And I don't care if yep. you go buy that membership and then you like, that's all you could do. Walk in there, buy the membership, you walk out and then you, you know, you don't go to the gym for another like month. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't care, but you bought the gym membership. Sometimes it's just taking that first step and then now you're paying for it. Okay. So now you need to start using this gym membership. So if you're uncomfortable, go to the class. They've got these great classes that can help you. They, they teach you exactly what to do. They tell you exactly what yep. to do and you can be much more comfortable in those classes. And then you can work your way out to doing cardio out there and then you can work your way out to actually lifting weights and everything like that. And I think you'll find most people in gyms are pretty nice and decent and they just kind of stick to themselves anyways. Yep. So that's just one thing. That's just one thing is, you know, start exercising, be healthy. 
feel good inside, outside, just feel good about yourself and you're going to help your business as well. Yep. And, and, and then again, exercise, we threw it in because yeah, a lot of these people, I, I've had problems with it before. I think you've had problems with it yeah. before of not feeling comfortable in my own skin. And a gym was a very hard thing to do at first. So right. that's why we threw it in there. Now, um, <clears throat> learn a new hobby or skill. So these are personal. Learn a new hobby or skill. But when you do this stuff, even though it's personal stuff, it does bleed over into every aspect of your life. So it's going to come into your personal life uh, it's going to come into your uh, business. It's going to come into your relationship with your wife and your kids and everybody around you. So learn a new hobby or skill. And that's a really good thing to push you outside your comfort zone. I know one guy I was talking to him. He learned how to play hockey and he was older and he was like, he, he, he signed up. It was funny. He signed up for this class to go play hockey. Um, learn how to play hockey. He showed up and he had misread the age group. Oh no. <laughs> he showed up and it was a bunch of 13 year olds <laughs> and he was like 40. He was like, I can take these kids. Yeah, this yeah, is going to be awesome. And the funny thing was, is he's like, they kicked my butt. He's like, they let me do the class and they kicked my butt. <clears throat> so it was really funny, but find, and, and when you're thinking about this, it might not even be something you're interested in or that you, again, feel comfortable doing. I want you doing things that you don't feel comfortable right. doing. If you don't, if you're very shy and you don't feel comfortable speaking, publicly speaking, I don't care if you're never going to publicly speak in your life. It will, it will push you and it will help you grow. I know that firsthand. There are many, there's a group called Toastmasters. There's yep. many groups out there that are absolutely free that will help you learn how to speak. In fact, I just saw the other day on those new VR headset things, there's a, <laughs> there's apps that you can learn how to publicly speak on these apps and it puts a bunch of people in front of you in, in a virtual reality and it helps you learn how to speak. Well, I'll give you a real quick one on this on learning a new hobby or skill, right? What so my it? son was in Cub Scouts and I think Trevor's talked about it before, oh, yeah. like the Pinewood Derby races. And I am I am not a woodworker or anything <laughs> like that. No interest whatsoever. It's just not who I am. And so my son is so excited because he's like, Dad, we're going to build this Pinewood Derby car. And it's going to be so cool and da-da-da-da-da and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, like I know I've got like my brother-in-law Joseph who's really good at this. <laughs> yeah. I can rely on him. And... But that's not what my son wanted. I'm like, hey, we can go with over to Joseph and he'll show us how to like make the perfect car that's going to win every single time. <laughs> yep. And he's like, well, no, I want to do it with you. And I'm like, dang <laughs> it. Like, you know, let's I want to just take him to the expert <laughs> yeah. and, you know, learn at the feet of the master and yep. leave me out of it. Yep. Just, no, but I mean, so anyway, so and it's like he, I'm like, all right, I'll help you do it. But, you know, I, I have to learn this with you. So I had a friend and he had all the tools and everything. And I was over there and we're working on it. And I'm like, all right, what do you want to build? And he's like, I want to build the Batmobile. Oh, come on. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> and I'm like, this is ridiculous. That's level advanced. Yeah, son. exactly. But. We worked on it. I learned it. And we had an amazing experience. That's and he, awesome. I think they do it for like three years. You know, so again, I got out of my comfort zone and I did something that I didn't even like to do. Yeah. And I, I still don't. Yeah. Like I'm not a woodworker <laughs> now, but it got me out of my comfort zone and it created a, a wonderful experience with a family member. Absolutely. So, you know, get out there and do it. Absolutely. When we're getting out of our comfort zones, that's the whole point of this whole thing is that's when we're learning and we're growing. Um, the next thing that you could do is you could volunteer at or, or an organization or a charity. Yes. So go help people. Go help other people. That makes you feel amazing. But that can really be uncomfortable. It can be a very uncomfortable situation. I've gone and I've done some of these soup kitchens. Yes. And it's hard. It's not an easy thing to do. Sometimes, I mean, I found myself one time, it was so hard. I had a hard time looking the people in the eye because I was almost ashamed mm -hmm. at the way that, not of them, but at the way that like my life was versus their life. Yes. And I've I had the same thing. Yeah, it was hard. And I... I just wanted, I just wanted to like save them, help them, you know, teach them or you know, honestly just give them stuff, which that we all know that doesn't, that doesn't work very well. But <clears throat> the thing was, <clears throat> it wasn't comfortable. It was yeah. uncomfortable for me. I know for me, I came back mm -hmm. with a huge gratitude oh, appreciation for, for sure. what I had. So Absolutely. I was real again, like you said, I was really uncomfortable yeah. in, in that situation, not by any of them, yeah, but no. because of, you know, just looking at my own life and realizing, yeah. man, I'm super blessed. Mm -hmm. And when's the last time I like stopped Absolutely. And, and, you know, thanked, 
the universe for that. So, I, yeah, I think that's amazing. Absolutely, because the first time it was hard. The second time it was a little bit easier, a little, time, a little easier, a little easier. Each time you do something that's uncomfortable, yes. it gets easier and easier. And then all of a sudden, these people become my best friends. And it's it, you don't see them for the situation they're in anymore. You see them for who they truly are. Yeah. And it's like everybody just wants to give a dollar out the door, a couple bucks, you know, just someone standing on the corner. I don't like doing it like that. What I like to do is pull over, park, walk over to the person. Sure, I will give them some money. I'll give them a handout. I'll try to help them give them a hand up. But I like to talk to them because I can't tell you how many people have cried and just thanked me because they were like, I haven't just talked to someone in months. One guy was like, I haven't talked to anybody in years. Yeah. He's like, I just go from town to town. I remember I picked up this one guy on the side of the road and it was it was Christmas Eve. And I pick him up. And he was walking down the train tracks. And so I picked him up and I said, hey, why don't I give you a ride? How far are you going down? He's like, well, I'm just going all the way as far. I'm just traveling, wandering. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. I said, well, I can take you about five miles down the road. I said, why don't I buy you a meal today? Have you eaten? He's like, no, I haven't eaten. I said, great. Let's go sit and have a meal. So I drove around. I said, hey, pick whatever you want. And I tried. And, and this is not a comfortable thing to, for most people to do, to yeah. just pick somebody up. And in fact, your mama's going to tell you, don't do that. He's going to stab you or something like that. But <laughs> It's something I like to do. I'd never let, I would never let my wife do this, but I like to do it. <laughs> and, and I do do it often. It's just something I enjoy because what I have found is these people have such amazing stories and amazing lives. And they just, something went wrong at some point in their life. Something changed. Usually tra tragedy happened and they just didn't know how to cope or handle it. And so anyways, long story short, I, he wanted to go and get like Chinese food. Everything was closed because of Christmas Eve. I said, oh, I'm so sorry. Everything is closed except for Wendy's because it's Christmas Eve. And he looked at me. He's like, it's Christmas Eve. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, that's so sad. He goes, I didn't even know. I didn't even know it was Christmas Eve. And the thing was, is I am so comfortable with these people now where I was very uncomfortable in the beginning. I'm so comfortable. You know, I was able to sit and we had a meal together and you know, at the end, I gave him some money to go over to the store. I showed him, you know, he want to get back on the train tracks and where he could keep going down the road, make sure that he got bottles of water and everything like that. But like, it changes, it changes your perspective. And, you know, I, I hug these people. I'm not afraid of them. I'm not, a, I'm not worried about, you know, what do they have or what's wrong with them or nah. none of that. It's all changed because my perspective has changed, but it didn't start that way. Right. It, was it was a long time getting to that point. So anyways, it's just pushing ourselves out of those out of those situations. So what's another way that we can do it? We can learn and grow by listening to podcasts like you guys are doing right now. Yep. Podcasts are a great way because be between podcasts and audiobooks, there's so many self-help and then also business growth type podcasts like ours. And we try to mix it up. We try to do a little bit of both. We want to help our business owners and their families and everything all around. We want to have kind of all encompassing. But, you know, there's a lot of really good stuff out there that can help you <clears throat> grow and learn. And honestly, they'll challenge you. They will challenge you to get out of your comfort zone. So that's kind of it. That's kind of what we've got for today, yeah. guys. I, you know, I just think... What you need to do is you need to look at your situation. You need to look at what you're going through in your life, the perspective uh, from a different perspective of where am I at currently? What am I currently doing? And then am I comfortable? Am I too comfortable? And am I not growing because of that? Right. And then from there, you should be looking at your weaknesses and take those weaknesses and you want to turn them in to your strengths. Take your greatest weaknesses like mine was public speaking and I turned it into one of my greatest strengths. And now I'm living a life more fulfilling than I have ever imagined. Someone said to me, what would you do if you couldn't do today what you're doing? And I was like, I don't know. I have no idea. I literally <laughs> couldn't answer. I had no idea. It took me three days to be like, I think I'd be a realtor. <laughs> I'm like, I think I'd be a realtor. But but beyond that, I, I just, I really couldn't do it because I've, I've built this life that I love. But it's come through, you know, years and years of uncomfortable situations, pushing that box and expanding that box. And that's what you need to do. Look at your weaknesses, turn them into strengths. And it's just t about taking one little step at a time. It's nothing major. It's nothing. You don't just go and jump in front of 5,500 people and start speaking. Trust <laughs> me, they will boo you off the stage. Yes. But you start in these little tiny movements. It's all about, it's how business is. When you're making a, a decision in your business, it's, it's small, these incremental and well-calculated movements. 
And I guarantee you guys will continue to grow. Your businesses will continue to grow. Your personal life and your situation with your husbands and your wives and your families, it will continue to grow. Relationships will come back that you have lost. As you improve yourself, everything around you will improve. Troy, any last thoughts? Hey, my last thought is I always believe that the best thing you can do is take action right now. Yeah. So, you know, think about what we've said today. Pick one thing that you know yeah. that it makes you uncomfortable that you can work on this week. Yeah. Don't just be like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that in the future. Pick <laughs> something this week yeah. and work on it this week. That's right. So that's my last thought. That's right. Every week, pick something. I love that. That's a great idea. Well, thank you guys so much for being with us for another So Tell Us Time. Uh, I think we get off on rants sometimes and these go a little bit longer than what we anticipated, <laughs> but we hope you enjoy them. We hope you have fun with them. We kind of bear our souls sometimes. We share stories about ourselves that aren't necessarily always flattering and, and it put us in the best lights, but we want you guys to know it's real. We're real. This is real. This isn't like, I don't make money off this. Troy doesn't make money off the podcast. We're here to just help you with what, you know, the things that you need to do to take steps to grow your business. All the knowledge that we've gained in all the thousands of businesses as we've traveled the world, speaking on stages, sitting one-on-one, -on -one, sitting with corporations, working with publicly traded companies, all the way from the one-man show to clients that have you know hundreds of employees. So that's what our purpose is. So we hope that you guys will share it that you guys will tell everybody about it. So tell us time. They can search it on any podcast channel. Go to uh, YouTube and just type in So Tell Us and you're going to see it. Go to any podcast channel and you're going to see it. We're all over. We appreciate and love you guys. Thank you so much. We will catch you guys on the next episode of So Tell Us Time. <laughs>